Hi, I'm Katherine Mitchell. I work for Kentucky State University as an aquaculture extension associate, and today I will be showing you how to test for water quality. Anytime you're working with chemicals, it is important to take safety precautions, uh, as wear a lab coat, long pants, closed-toed shoes, gloves, and then safety glasses or eyeglasses. Um, first off, we're going to do hardness, and hardness is the amount of calcium and magnesium found in the water. So we'll take our plastic tube and fill it full of water. Uh, we will then put it in our mixing bottle. All right, so now we're going to add three drops of the buffer solution hardness one. And then swallow to mix. We will now add one drop of the Mander hardness solution two. And then swallow to mix. Now we add the titrant reagent, hardness three, and we'll count this drop by drop until we get a color change. And that was 16 drops. Uh, it changed from pink to blue. And then to get your hardness in milligrams per liter, you would multiply that by 17.1. Now we're going to test for alkalinity. And alkalinity is the total concentration of bases. And this refers to the capability of water to neutralize acid or its buffering capacity. So first you're going to get your plastic tube and fill it up. And then pour it into your glass mixing bottle. Then you will add one drop of the phenothaline solution. And swallow to mix. If the water turns pink, then you're going to want to titrate with the sulfuric acid. However, in our case, it does not turn pink, so then you want to add a packet of the Bromosol Green Methyl Red Powder Pillow. Well, to mix. And then you will titrate with the sulfuric acid until you get a color change. And be sure to count your drops, so we'll do a calculation at the end. That was seven drops, so then we'll multiply seven by 17.1 to get our answer in milligrams per liter. Now I'm gonna show you how to test for dissolved oxygen. And first we need to calibrate our monitor. So we need to switch the bottom switch to cal and turn on the machine. We'll then want to calibrate it to 0, 0.0 and we do this by adjusting the left screw uh, until you reach 0, 0.0.
Next, you want to fill the membrane full of the electrode fluid. and then screw it into the probe. And remove the silicone cap. Now you want to connect the probe to the monitor. And then you want to wait several minutes to let the probe stabilize. Once the monitor stabilizes, then you're going to want to calibrate the O2 knob. So the screw on the right, you're going to want to turn it until it reads 20.9. And then once it reaches 20.9, you're ready to take your oxygen. So you're going to switch that bottom switch to the DO now and then insert your probe into your water. And then once the monitor stabilizes, that would be your DO. And in this case, it's about 9.2. We are now going to test for temperature. Uh, we're using a mercury thermometer, so please be careful with this. And if it does break, dispose of it properly. So for this, we have our water sample, and we'll just place it in here. And as soon as we get a stable reading, that will be the temperature. So in this case, it reads about 18 degrees Celsius. Hello, I'm Dr. Bob Derbero, Assistant Research Director for Kentucky State University College of Agriculture, Food Science and Sustainable Systems. Uh, I'm also a professor and extension specialist in the Division of Aquaculture here at the university as well. In that capacity, I work with county agents, working with uh, landowners, managing their ponds, as well as um, working with uh, high schools and high school teachers that work with uh, closed systems. So one thing that we have to do when we work with, uh, with people is with their, with their water management is check water quality. Uh, with the tank systems, uh, whenever you feed fish, uh, there's an ammonia buildup, and the ammonia has to be checked and monitored or it can be toxic to the fish. Uh, the ammonia breaks down to nitrite, and that has to also be checked. So we'll be going through. Uh, the actual testing procedures using this FF1 test kit here for ammonia and for nitrite. To test for ammonia, we use these test tubes that come with the kit, and we use this box here. It has an ammonia color wheel in the box, and we use five cc's or five milliliters of the, of the tank water and you could either fill it up to this, up to where the frosting starts in this tube, or you can, I think this is a little bit easier actually, to use a syringe. So the syringe is marked off into cc's or cubic centimeters. Uh, 10 cc's is the same thing as 10, 10, uh, 10 milliliters. So when we're filling these tubes, we'll Fill the syringe up to 10, 10 cc's or 10 milliliters. Put them in the, the test tube rack here. And we'll put 5 cc's or 5 milliliters in one tube. And 5 cc's in the other tube. And one of the tubes we won't add anything to. We'll leave it blank. And to this tube here for the ammonia test, we'll first of all add one drop of Rochelle salt solution, a 
Okay, and then we'll mix that up. If the water is hard, which in a lot of places around Kentucky, the water is hard, the Rochelle salt keeps this next solution here, the Nestle reagent, from uh, kind of clumping. So we'll use this Nestle reagent here, and we'll add three drops of it to that same test tube. shake that up and then we need to wait 10 minutes for the color to develop and for speed of this demonstration uh, 10 minutes ago I started this test here with the ammonia and we got this color developed so this this tube here will turn this color eventually within the next 10 minutes but instead of waiting we'll go ahead and get that result here we'll put it in this box on the right side and we'll take the blank tube that we didn't add anything to on the left side and then what I do is I usually hold it up so that I have fluorescent lighting in back of me and in front of me and I try to match the color wheel reading with the test tube and and I get a 1.2 so I get a 1.2 parts per million or milligrams per liter of total ammonia with this test here. Now there is uh, also uh, uh, the, the most crucial step here is to calculate the toxic ammonia. And in order to do that, we need to check the pH and temperature of this water. And then we will refer to a table and we'll get a number from the table based on the temperature and pH readings. So while we're leaving that thermometer in there for a little while, I will get the uh, pH meter and use it to check the pH of this water. And this is the type of meter I think that uh, that has uh, is available to a lot of uh, high schools around Kentucky and we'll simply turn it on here okay, and have this meter plugged in here it's important to keep the probe you can see it's in a, a humid type of uh, enclosure here and we take the probe out of this protective enclosure where it's stored And then we need to calibrate the meter. And we'll first of all use this pH 7, known pH 7 solution here. And I, I find it helps if you move the probe a little bit. And there's a little. Uh, screw with the seven next to it right right here and if this will probably have to be adjusted slightly to make it 7.0 and we have just find a tiny little flathead screwdriver that fits in here and we're getting the reading of 6.97 that's essentially probably good enough for calibration but I'll just go ahead and show you that I can just turn this screw a little bit here and adjust it up to up to pH 7. At this point I will remove the probe from this uh, calibrating solution, pH 7 calibrating, and I'll rinse it off in this uh, distilled water here. I'll plug this pH 7 solution back up, set it aside, and we'll get out the uh, pH 10, known pH 10 solution, and the probe's cleaned off now, I'll put it into my pH 10 solution, and you can see it's, it's uh, approaching 10, 9.95, 9.95, 9.95, 
uh, I can move it around a little bit too. I think that helps. And uh, if you were doing this, you know, in your at your school, uh, and that actually did go up to ten there. If uh, if it doesn't go up to ten, you can simply uh, use this screw here. It says four or ten. You can adjust this screw to make it ten here when you're calibrating. Now, since it's calibrated, I'll rinse the probe off again. I'll set this aside here and I'll put the probe into the solution, into the tank water solution that I'm interested in checking the pH for. And you see the pH is uh, well, approximately 8.1. Um, uh, eight point looks like it's going dropping down a little bit to eight seven point nine seven okay so seven point eight is the rough pH of this solution and the temperature is eighteen degrees centigrade eighteen degrees C so we simply use the table uh, and we find the number that corresponds to uh, the temperature of 18 uh, degrees, or what's it, 18 degrees C, and uh, a pH of 7.8. Um, and then we, we take the number that we got in this from this color wheel, 1.2 parts per million total ammonia, multiply it by that number from that table, and that gets us the milligrams per liter or parts per million of toxic or unionized ammonia. Toxic or unionized ammonia of 0.4 parts per million or higher can give fish a problem. Um, it can kill fish or it can actually uh, uh, cause them to not eat as much and grow less and uh, it reduces survivability. When we're through with these tests here, this is especially important when we're dealing with Nestler reagent. Nestle reagent, which we used in this test, has mercury in it. And this waste container here is specifically designed to uh, hold mercury waste from the Nestle reagent. And these are very important procedures to do because we don't want to contaminate our water supply. Our aquifers in the state might get contaminated if we simply dump these down the sink. Now we're going to be checking for nitrite toxicity in the water and also chloride concentrations, which kind of go hand in hand. The chloride concentration in the water protects uh, the fish from the nitrite in the water. But first of all here we'll, we'll talk about the nitrite and then we'll kind of proceed into the, the chloride test. Uh, to test for nitrite, uh, we need to fill up the syringe with 10 cc's or 10 milliliters of, of the tank water. Put five cc's or five milliliters in this test tube and five in this. <clears throat> this tube will just leave blank. We won't add anything to it. But this other tube, we will add Nitro Air 3 powder pillow to that one tube. And after we add this powder from this tube, uh, I typically just tear these open, but uh, if you have difficulty doing that, you can use the, uh, the clipper that comes with the kit. And then I just push the little cellophane powder containing packet open and pour it into the tube and so you don't get your fingers exposed to this chemical you can use the, the plastic cap that comes with it or if you have vinyl gloves like I have on here nitrile gloves uh, latex or whatever type of, of gloves you can use that and then shake it up real well I think the instructions say to shake it for a full minute I typically shake it a little bit less than that and then we'll leave that to develop, for that color to develop over the next 
10 minutes. For sake of time, 10 minutes ago I, I ran this test, this same test, uh, using that same type of uh, powder pillow for the nitrite and this is the red color that develops after 10 minutes. You can see the one that we just did is starting to turn red already, but it's not quite ready to read. For the nitrite test, we will use this red color wheel here in the box, and we'll put the red sample on the right and the blank sample on the left. <clears throat> and I like to hold it up to uh, to two different lights, a light, fluorescent light in front of me, a fluorescent light in back of me, and then match up the colors. Okay, in this case here, the, the color is so dark that it can't be read by the wheel. So what we have to do is make a dilution. And let's see, I need to get some deionized uh, ammonia-free water. What we can do here is we will take this empty test tube here and we'll add one cubic centimeter of water and we can use this to measure the one milliliter or one cubic centimeter of water. Okay, so we'll put this one milliliter of the test solution into this test tube here, and then we'll add four milliliters of ammonia-free water, and we can take the syringe and measure out four milliliters of the ammonia-free water, and add this to the one milliliter of that original test, and you see it dilutes the color so that we can get an accurate reading with this, uh, with this color wheel. And again, we'll put the, the blank in the left. And we'll get the match up the colors here. And it's a 0 0.14. So when we have the 0 0.14, <clears throat> that's not exactly our milligrams per liter in nitrite. We have to remember that we cut that solution by 5, so it would be the, the 1.4, I'm sorry, the 0.14 times 5, and then times a correction factor for the nitrite test, which is 3.3. .3. So we take the 0.14 times 5 times the 3.3 and that gives us the milligrams per liter or parts per million of nitrite. So in order to protect the fish from this toxic nitrite we need to have enough chloride ions, enough sodium chloride in the water to protect the, the fish from, from the nitrite toxicity. So now I can run the, the uh, chloride test Okay, and so we can get a calculation of the 0 0.14 times the 5 times the 3.3. So 0 0.14 from the color wheel times the 5, we, we cut it 5 times with the dilution, and the 3.3 conversion factor, and we'll get that number 2.3 three parts per million or milligrams per liter of nitrite. We like to always have at least 10 times more chloride in the water from, from a salt source to protect the fish from, you know, 10 times more chloride than, than nitrite to protect the fish. So we would need at least 23 parts per million of chloride in the water. So let me go ahead and run the chloride test here. This chloride test that uh, we've developed differs from the test that's in the uh, FF1A manual. 
and, and we have a flow chart that you can, uh, you can refer to on that. Um, but what we do is we take the, uh, the, the tank water and we use 46 milliliters of the tank water. This uh, little bottle that comes in the FF1A test kit has uh, increments marked off. This has 23 milliliters marked off at the top there. So we'll simply fill that up twice to the 23 milliliter mark. And we'll put that in, uh, we'll use this, this empty beaker here. And we'll do that one more time to the 23 milliliter mark. So we have a total of 46 milliliters of water. And then we'll add one chloride two indicator powder pillow And this, uh, this came from this packet here. We'll open this up. And it will turn kind of a brilliant yellow color. And then we titrate this sample with silver nitrate. So when I say titrate, <clears throat> we simply count the drops of the silver nitrate that it takes to turn this bright yellow color into kind of a dull yellow, orangish color. So one drop. You see it's still that bright yellow. Drop number two. It's still kind of a bright color. Drop three, four, five, six, not quite there, seven, now I would stop there. It's not bright yellow anymore. So seven drops. And in order to be a little bit on the conservative side, we, we, we don't want to overestimate the amount of chloride. We want to add liberally with salt. So <clears throat> we take those seven drops and we subtract one. So we get six, six drops. And we'll multiply that times the uh, 3.8 factor for the chloride test. So 3.8 times 6 drops equals 22.8. Okay, so we'll just round that off to 23. So we want to add 23 milligrams, or I'm sorry, we have 23 milligrams per liter of chloride in this water. And so looking back at the nitrite that we got, we got a 2.3 parts per million nitrite, and we actually have 23 milligrams per liter of chloride. So in this case, we're actually protected adequately uh, by the chloride uh, that's in the water. Now, um, so our chloride concentration was 23 milligrams per liter. But I like to recommend that people maintain at least 100 parts per million or 100 milligrams per liter of chloride in the water just as a preventive type measure in case the nitrite unpredictably shoots up. So I like to recommend uh, just if you have a, a, a tank of fish, make sure you have 0.63 grams of salt per gallon. And for every, uh, and that would, that would put your, your concentration of, of chloride at 100 parts per million. So 6.63 grams of sodium chloride salt per, per gallon. Or if you measure your tank in cubic feet, uh, 4.7 grams of salt per cubic foot, and that, that will give you 100 parts per million of chloride. Okay, and if, uh, if you have uh, a nitrite concentration that exceeds 10 parts per million, 
uh, see the 100 part per million chloride will protect you up to 10 parts per million of nitrite, uh, then you can add more salt to the, to the water to protect the fish from that even higher amount of nitrite that, that, could, that could occur in the water. So thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, please contact myself or Kat Mitchell at Kentucky State University Aquaculture.